and welcome to the first program of Ghana Police Watch, the weekly flagship series that will broadcast on television networks across Ghana. My name is Israel Ai, your host. Now, combating crime and protecting citizens at all times is a critical constitutional mandate of the Ghana Police Service. And Ghana Police Watch will provide reliable and timely information in this respect. The series will also serve as an all-embracing public platform for the discussion of policing in Ghana. Each edition will also feature special reports, regular news bulletins, and useful tips about how you can enhance your own personal safety as well as that of friends and family. Above all, how we can all collectively work together to keep our communities and countries safe and protected from crime at all times. Your regular feedback is essential to the success of the series. Please keep them coming. Tonight, we're privileged to have in the studio the Inspector General of Police, Mr. David Asante Pietu. He will be shedding light on the service's transformative agenda and discuss current trends in crime, amongst other pertinent issues. Before then, however, here is a unique documentary that provides insights into the internal workings of the Ghana Police Service, highlighting its achievements as well as challenges. The documentary also discusses the dynamics of the new structural reform program that aims to transform the Ghana Police Service into a highly professional, world-class service. Let's take a look. Accra, capital city of Ghana. One of its symbolic landmarks is a distinctive post-colonial building, the headquarters of Ghana Police Service, the organization constitutionally mandated through the Police Council and Police Management Board to combat crime and protect citizens at all times. Ghana Police Service is headed by Inspector General of Police, Mr. David Asante Pietu, a forensic scientist, drugs and ballistic expert whose distinguished career in the service was brought into the limelight by the successful investigation under his leadership of the serial killings of women in Ghana during the late 1990s. Based on strategic objectives set by the government of Ghana, Ghana Police Service has launched a transformation program aimed at structural reform of every stratum of the service. The Ghana Police Service has a very clear vision, that is to become a world-class police organization capable of delivering planned, democratic, protective and peaceful services up to the standards of international best practice. This is where we derive our impetus from. This also requires a new kind of policing, a new police officer. There are significant factors that inform this. We cannot downplay the role of the police service in this country, protecting our people and ensuring that we live in peace. Within the democratic dispensation that we have opted for, key is the maintenance of law and order. We spoke to one of Ghana's leading security advisors. This country is going to double its population probably in the next 60 years. Added to that will be expanding unplanned urban spaces. Now that creates particular types of law enforcement you know, challenges. I think the Ghana Police Service is beginning to respond to some of these challenges. Police emergency, how may I assist you? It's when we live in peace that people can go about their duty uh, respectably and also in comfort. It promotes the economy of our country and uh, also promotes tourism. Ghana is ranked the best place for doing business in West Africa and remains your gateway to accessing the Equus market of over 350 million. Security is one of the key selling features. Um, of attractiveness, of a country attractiveness. And people will come into your country when they feel safe. If nobody feels safe, nobody is going to come into your country. I can tell you right off the bat that for Ghana, one of our biggest selling points, first of all, is the political stability underpinned by a very peaceful, relatively peaceful community. A, a lot of people are very happy when they come to Ghana they tell me that oh, I can walk around everywhere you don't see crime like you see in other places you don't see the risk as high as you see in other places 
but that in itself is a major attraction. Ghana has been seen as the beacon of stability and peace, and, and we don't um, take it for granted. Um, we, it's, it's a major selling point for both investors and for tourists, visitors, and everybody else. So that responsibility is very important. All of us are interested to ensure that it is, you know, um, actually facilitated in the best possible way. One of the key drivers for this new transformative vision is expansion of the internet, online business and e-commerce and the application of new technologies by criminals. It has become very necessary for us to manage crime with technology. This necessitates a strategically different approach to tackling crime. It becomes very, very important for us to transform the Ghana Police Service. Revamping the Criminal Investigations Department, headed by Mrs. Mamiya Tiwa Adodankwa, is critical to giving a sharper focus to combating crime. Every police station in Ghana has a Criminal Investigations Unit. One of our core mandates is crime prevention. And we also gather information, process them into intelligence, and then feed the operations unit. Currently, documentation of police stations is predominantly manual. This is about to change to electronic processing. When somebody walks to the police station and makes a complaint, whatever that the person takes, you write your statement and then it is scanned and stored digitally. And in three months time, you come back and you want to find out the status. Instead of going to pick a file and check the dates and other things, just by pressing a button maybe with your date of birth or some unique identification we're able to tell when the case was reported where we have gone to the status of investigation and the way for the intended action i can sit in my office and i can know the cases that have been reported at east legon for the day how each of them is being investigated who is investigated what and whether they are on the right direction e-policing currently 21 police stations are being piloted. Criminal checks by manual fingerprinting is another area to be transformed by technology. You just put your finger on the machine, take the fingerprint and run through the system. Within a minute, a report comes whether you have a record or you don't have a record. The transformation agenda is coming as a savior for those of us at the Criminal Investigation Department. It is good news for us and we hope that it can help us to improve our service delivery to the good people of Ghana. With the rise in cybercrime, the CID is also increasing its capacity to handle the increased complaints. This young lady was lured to an isolated location outside Accra, robbed and sexually molested. It's dusk. The police patrol car battles through across traffic in response to another emergency. Significantly, this has been backed by improved intelligence. These are the police officers who risk their lives daily in the line of duty. A kidnapping is in progress. A police mobile unit is ready to respond. Bravo Combat readiness is now backed by improved intelligence. Drop it! Drop your weapons now! Soon, the kidnapping is over and the culprits are in the arms of the law. Kumasi, capital of Ashanti region. In the past, crime rates have been soaring, but recently, the police response has been impressive. Supervision to it has been very, very good. We ensure that we survive the men and then we brief them to be professional in whatever they are doing. That has been our success story. The police has deployed motorcyclists, rapid mobile units and traffic spot checks to bring down the crime rates. Significantly, this has been backed by improved intelligence. Afrikiko Junction, Accra, Terminal Motorway.
Kolo in the Western region. The police is watching you. Over a thousand of these cameras have been installed at strategic locations across the country. These cameras have made police surveillance more effective and given a boost to fighting crime. Playbacks have also been very useful. In this particular case, investigation into a road accident. Good morning, police emergency. How may I assist you? These cameras are operated from emergency command centers in Accra, Kumasi and Tamale that are now receiving a record number of calls. When the call comes in, the system automatically generates a case form. The case form is meant to solicit the essential information required from the caller. If it is a motor accident, are there any persons injured? If it is a robbery, are the robbers armed? And so on. All calls can be traced to where they are made. In case a call drops, the operator can call back. Once a call is processed, the information is sent to the dispatch section for patrol teams in the field. One challenge are prank calls that divert attention from real emergencies. Prank calls must stop. In a genuine emergency, we may not be able to access our emergency command center. Locating crime scenes promptly is another. Many houses and dwellings in Ghana are located on unnamed streets. This is being addressed by the new GPS address system, which is an integral part of the new emergency response system. This command center is a milestone along the way of the transformational agenda that the Ghana Police Service has launched. The Ghana Police Service, as I speak to you, is about total number strength of 33,000. For the population of Ghana, the minimum strength should have been 56,000. At 33,000, the police to civilian ratio is 1 is to 848, which is far lower than the UN minimum of 1 is to 500. Therefore, the result to the digital intervention is meant to ameliorate or to mitigate the defect or deficiency or the deficit which stands at 23,000 police personnel. This intervention, which is going to make it easier for the police to monitor crime and make it easier for people in need to get in touch, therefore making it more efficient for them to check crime, it's a welcome intervention. Ghana Police Service has a long history dating back to the mid-19th century. Before the Europeans arrived in the country, the chiefs were having the executive and judicial power. They employed uh, the services of messengers uh, who in local parlance uh, we call the Ahifie police. When the Europeans arrived, the situation changed. In 1943, when Lieutenant Governor Hill arrived, he inherited 129 men who were called Gold Coast Corps and 62 men who were known as militia. He merged the two groups known as the Gold Coast Corps. 1947, the Gold Coast Police Band visits London and by all accounts makes a huge impression. <laughs> These 35 lucky Africans were given a tremendous reception wherever they went.
The service has a range of departments that work together to deliver a number of services to the public, including the Motor Transport and Traffic Department. The MTTD is the eye of the police service. We are always in contact with the public. We control traffic and manage traffic. We investigate accidents. Also, do presidential uh, protocol escort for VVIPs. A police academy. The Human Resource Department. Our main responsibility is uh, recruitment of personnel into the service at all levels, training of personnel after recruitment and then also uh, capacity building for the personnel who are already in the service. For the recruit training at the basic level we have five training schools in the country. Uh, we have one in Accra which is our biggest training school and the oldest and which for many years used to be the only training school. Then we have a uh, a training school in Kumasi, another one in Koforubia, and one in Ho, and we have Police Public Safety Training School in Kualugo, and that school also trains uh, recruits. We also have officers who need some specialized training. For instance, if you come out from uh, the basic training and you have to go to CID, you, you, you need to be given uh, training as a detective. So we have a detective training school. So personnel who will eventually end up in the CID are sent there to be trained as detectives. And these are people who are already in the service. We also have specialized units, like uh, the Special Weapons and Tactics SWAT. We have the Form Police Units. National Patrol Department and the Police Hospital. It was to take care of the police personnel. But along the line, other security personnel under the Ministry of Interior came in, like the prison service, the fire service, immigration, and the customs. We also take care of the civilians. Yes. Welcome to the discussion segment of Ghana Police Watch. And we're privileged this evening to have in the studio the Inspector General of Police, Mr. David Asante Epiotu. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Israel. It's a privilege to actually have you. Now, you've had a long, distinguished service in the Ghana Police Service. What would you say are the highlights? Well, let me begin by saying that uh, I was trained as a chemist from the University of Kharkov in the former Soviet Union. On completion, I started reading about forensic sciences, and I got to know that in the forensic science laboratory, a great deal of work is on the chemical side, so that aroused my interest in joining the Ghana Police Service. I was enlisted in 1990, but I did uh, a two-year pre-college uh, course in 1998. I did uh, work as a, a district commander for the Sisala district for one and a half years, after which I was posted to the forensic laboratory. I understudy a firearm examiner called Chief Superintendent Ayabin and uh, over time I happened to be trained as well in the Metropolitan Forensic Laboratory in London. Over time I had a, another opportunity to go to South Africa and uh, I was in the forensic lab in Pretoria. I came back to Ghana and continued with uh, my firearms examination in the forensic lab. When you talk about firearms examination, essentially you take a, a weapon and exhibit essentially yes. and analyze it and right. you're able to say whether this bullet was used in this yes. you know, attack. Firearms, ballistics, they are interchangeable. Okay. But I prefer to say I am a firearm examiner. All right even though I do a lot of ballistics in the firearms examination. Every weapon has a fingerprint. Okay. If the suspect bullet and then the test bullet matches, it okay. means that it's the same firearm 
that was used in both cases. Oh, wow. Essentially, what we're, we're talking about now is beginning to look more like uh, the investigative series we watch on TV. Oh, yes. CSI Miami and the rest. Yes. And uh, we're probably talking CSI Accra. Clearly, you have a very distinguished career. And uh, let's look back at, uh, we're in 2018. Let's look at, at uh, 2017. What are the crime trends that we saw? We haven't had crimes coming down. We always have an increase in crimes. It tells us that we are using the same methods in fighting crime, so we get the same results most of the time. Robbery is on the increase, and we may attribute robberies to the increase in street robberies. We have a lot of motorbikes in the system, and they are being used in committing crimes. We're looking at people who are sitting on motorbikes and snatches, right. snatching people's uh, right. valuables from exactly. their vehicles and the rest. Exactly. Domestic firearms. These are not pistols. They are all shotguns, locally manufactured. Very simple. A rod and a nail. Narcotics, for example, was on the decrease. But sometimes uh, it can be deceptive. Other new methods have been adopted, so it takes some time for the police to detect yes, or realize. To get to know. So for the narcotics, it's gone down, but yes. you're not too convinced that... No, no, no. We, we are not complacent with the results that we get. We still have to work harder, you know. Rip and defilement, yes. It is also on the increase. After the inception of the domestic violence or waiju, Women and Juvenile Unit of the Ghana Police Service. And then the expansion of this unit, which is now called DOFSU, yeah. the expansion of it has emboldened many people to make complaints at the police stations. And with that, I want to believe that uh, the media's reportage also helps to embolden the people because they know that if they report it, the police will deal with it. The exactly. media will pick it up, the police will exactly. deal with it. Exactly. That is definitely so. If we come to cybercrime, yes, you know, we are all vulnerable. Locally known as Sakawa in 419. Yes. We receive a mail from a friend who says that... Uh, they are in distress. Yes. So send me some money. Sometimes you look at it and say, oh, 500 Ghana said I can make do. And then you part with the money. Your friend tells you that nothing. I have not sent any message. So with cyber crimes, a lot more of education is very important. Mm -hmm. And then there's also the mobile money fraud? Yes. Yes, we all know. We hear about it. And then we are being educated day by day. You know, they come out with different uh, uh, tactics. We, yeah. And then, the, you know, we get to know about them. And then we, we, we advise ourselves. Okay. So all these trends is the reason why you're talking about the need for the transformation agenda. Exactly. What are the key objectives? First of all, let me talk about the vision of the Ghana Police Service. Our vision is to become a world-class police organization capable of delivering a plan, democratic, protective, and peaceful services up to the standards of international best practices. Our main goal is to become the best in Africa and among the top 10 in the world. Oh, wow. Yes. This is uh, very audacious. Yeah, it is. Yes. How much time are you giving yourself to achieve? That? Well, we've given ourselves four years. That's a short time. Yes, it is. That's, we're looking at 2022. Yeah. Currently, we are ranked eighth in the, in the Africa. So, we can get there. Yeah. We will want to reduce crime. If we reduce crime, it's an indicator of a good police organization. Do the public respect us? Do the public think that we are wasting resources? Are we also respecting the public? What is our response time to distress calls, for example? These are some of the uh, indicators that if we are able to accomplish, it puts us in a world-class police level. And all these things 
should engender more confidence in the public. The public exactly. should have more confidence exactly. in you. We are also aware of the 13 strategic objectives of the government. In fact, it is the president's vision to transform the Ghana Police Service by ensuring that these 13 strategic goals are achieved. We are also taking reference from the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, number 16, which talks about peace and then the strong institutions, you know, and law enforcement. We put all together and we have condensed it into five themes. One is the officer on the ground, his development, his career development, and his welfare. We also have to revamp the criminal investigations department. Thirdly, we have to embolden the community policing. And then to ensure that uh, the police intelligence and standards take their rightful place in the police service. And then we have ICT as the main driver of these right. references that uh, I have mentioned. One of the issues you're talking about is community policing. What practical ways are you implementing this? With community policing, we think that uh, it is a way for us to get closer to the public. And we are also aware that every community has its peculiar challenges. The existing community police officers go to the communities and identify with the opinion leaders, church leaders who they interact with most of the time to identify some of the problems in that area. So together, they can find solutions. Apart from this, we, we wanted to learn from international best practices to have, in many countries they may have volunteers, others will engage people to work with the police. And here we have what we call the community protection personnel. This is an idea that came up through the transformation uh, agenda. For each electoral, electoral area, we will have six persons to be recruited, trained, and deployed to their electoral area. For every electoral area, we have six persons, and we have almost 6,000 electoral areas in the country, which means we need 36,000 persons. We agreed that we would do 15,000 in the short term and the medium term. But so far, we've done the training for 6,000. We have also sensitized the police officers who will be working with them because their role is collaborative. You know, they are going to, to help the police. So for every six persons, we have one police officer who will be working with them. Are we looking at the backgrounds of these people that have been selected in the community? Yes. It becomes easier when you are selecting people from the community. They are able to tell you that this gentleman is not right. fit for the purpose. So this is one way of uh, getting the, the public closer to the Ghana Police Service. The other one you brought up has to do with e-policing. How is all this also being worked out? On the 19th of December, the e-policing as a pilot project was launched at the uh, East Legon Police Station. What is e-policing? One can say that it's a paperless policing. We digitize all our documents on the computer. So if you came to the police station to lodge a complaint, right from the complaint level up to the point where the case will have to be sent to court, you are not going to use any paper at all. This takes away, call it even corruption, because once you enter a case, it is being viewed not only by you. Your station officer also sees this complaint on his monitor. If the case is referred to a detective, that detective will then start working on it, and every step in his investigation must be recorded. Now, the district commander also have uh, an oversight responsibility. And he also has his monitor and he knows all that is going on. If I sit in my office as a, 
the Inspector General of Police, and I want to have a look because that case is of importance to either the community or the nation. I can also have a look at it. Is this available in all the police stations? We've earmarked 21 stations who have been given training. So far, five stations are operating. operating. East Legon, Nima, Nungwa Ministries, and then the airport police station. Gradually, we want to expand nationwide. I understand that we have what? upwards of a thousand police stations. Are you looking at making or bringing them all on board? Definitely so. That is the aim of uh, the transformation, to get all our police stations connected. So you're looking at uh, an agenda 2022. How soon is this happening? Well, sometimes it's, uh, you can make it uh, quicker, okay. depending on the funding, resources, yeah, the resources at your disposal. Now, another objective has to do with the PIPs, the police policing itself. Yes. How is all that also being worked out? Right. We've been lucky to partner with a project being sponsored by the European Union, and it is called ARAP. Accountability, rule of law, and anti-corruption. It has been very, very beneficial to the Ghana Police Service. It has given us a new scope that if we concentrate on the inspectorate level, we will reduce some of these misconducts, you know, and then they are also able to handle some of these cases at their level and not to burden the PIPs office with too many cases. Are you saying that we're nabbing or punishing officers who have found themselves maybe taking a bribe here or two? The positive signs can be seen in the inspectors who are now trying to do what they have been taught by advising and then supervising the officers below them. But we believe that over time, we will see the positive results in this. However, peeps are still there to discipline or to take disciplinary action against those who misconduct themselves. And when they are found culpable, they are given the penalty. You are under sanctions and it affects your promotion and it's, sometimes you are dismissed. Now, one other area that the police interfaces a lot with the public has to do with the uh, motor transport and traffic uh, department of the Ghana Police Service. Are you reforming that area as well? You talked about that. We know that a lot of these uh, uh, bad reports comes from, I mean, it emanates from the conduct of our police officers in the streets, particularly the MTTD. So... It's on course. We are doing a rebranding of our MTTD personnel. And the rebranding here means that uh, we are doing internal recruitment. You have to be interviewed and see whether uh, you qualify to be an MTTD official. After that, you are given some training. And after the training, you are given a certificate, which uh, it's a certification that you can be an MTTD officer. We started here in Accra, we had 660 personnel who were trained in batches at the police depot, and they have come out. Is the training they're getting any different from what they've always gotten? Because if you're transforming, yes. then there should be a yes. change. In the past, due to constraints, I mean financial constraints, budget constraints, we are unable to do a lot of training and retraining and retraining. That is very, very important to make us more professional and efficient. Now, what we give them this time around is a kind of leadership training so that they can lead themselves when they are there. Nobody should come to tell you what to do the right thing, but you are able to do the right thing and do it. So I believe this is the difference. And then also uh, training them and sensitizing them on the transformation agenda.
that we cannot be the same all the time. We must change. Essentially trying to change their psyche exactly. to see things differently exactly. and, and buy into your transformation yes, agenda. agenda. Now, another aspect of your work has to do with uh, criminal investigations, which really was your, your field. What sort of transformation is taking place there too? Before you become a detective, you should have gone through the detective training school. Of course, in the training school, you are taught some uh, skills in crime detection. But for you to become a CID officer, you need to have been trained as a detective in the detective training school. Um, we have many detectives who have, uh, have not undergone this training. So this is an area, the training of officers to become detectives. So when we say we are revamping the CID, this is what we really mean. Apart from that, um, the president did announce the creation of a cyber security center and then providing the set skills for uh, detectives or the CID. But we've now acquired a room for this cyber security center. So their work will be solely on cyber crimes. Now, at the police headquarters, the crime detection is now science. You know, you, if you don't apply science to crime detection, I mean, your cases will always be thrown out in court because you do not have the scientific basis to make those allegations. So the forensic lab is an area where they must be resourced. They must be trained, first and foremost. The equipment we have, sadly, consumables are difficult to come by. So and when you're talking about consumables, yes, you're consumables, about gloves and yes, they do use a lot of chemicals in the forensic lab. If you are doing drug analysis, for example, I'll just give an example of uh, the basic test like uh, TLC. You will need chemicals. If you say TLC, <laughs> for most people, it means tender loving care. <sighs> Uh, thin layer chromatography. Okay. DNA consumables are very, very expensive. And in our case, we do not charge for any tests done. So these are the areas, but the main thing is to train the detective from the crime scene to the court. The processes should be at his fingertips. And then the integrity of Elizabeth and then himself as well, to ensure the integrity of Elizabeth. That is the chain of custody. So you've talked about a lot of training as part of the transformation agenda, but the police officer can have all the training, but if they don't feel motivated enough, or if you don't think that their welfare has been catered to, they, you're not gonna get the best out of them. How yeah. is that also being handled? Mm. Motivation is very important. The welfare. Where, where does the police officer sleep? Where does he sleep? We do not know perhaps where he's coming from to the office. You know, it's very, very important. It's, it's a very important factor. Yeah. So there's a lot going on yes. um, in the Ghana Police Service. And I'm sure 2018 holds a major promise for you. What would be your message to Ghanaians? Let me start by giving a message to my own police officers that uh, 2018 will be a year of professionalism and uh, integrity. We should give the friendly face of the Ghana Police Service to the public. We should learn how to say please and thank you and all that. I will want to lead a service with that kind of face. And I hope that all officers will join me, you know, in portraying, portraying the good image of the Ghana Police Service, particularly the friendly image of the Ghana Police Service. Now to the public, we need their support. It is something that we've been lacking over the period. Though we have been mandated to maintain law and order, 
this is a shared responsibility. We will require the public to enable us do work, maintain law and order by way of volunteering information because the criminals don't live elsewhere. They live in our communities and we know them. And so this is the message that I would like to give to Ghanaians. The central government has been supportive by providing you some vehicles. They provided a number of pickups and, uh, and motorbikes. I believe that goes a long way to support what you're doing. Right. That's very true. We are so thankful for what the government did, especially getting to the end of uh, the year by giving the police service about 100 vehicles and almost 300 uh, motorbikes. Uh, these are signs of uh, better days to come. Okay. We're hoping that in the year 2018, uh, the government already has promised us with 13 goals that they want to accomplish. And with these signs, we are hoping that more of those is, are going to happen and we will see a different police organization in the 2018. Thank you very much, uh, Inspector General of Police, David Asante Pietu, for making time uh, to share with us your vision for the Ghana Police Service. 45 drivers have been fined a total of 25,710 cities by the motor court in Accra for unauthorized use of sirens. According to the law, only six categories of vehicles or institutions are allowed to use sirens as this animation video illustrates. <laughs> Are you qualified to use the siren? Stop! Are you qualified to use the siren? Do you know that using a siren is regulated by law? Not every vehicle is qualified to use the siren on our roads. The road traffic regulation allows only certain classes of vehicles to use sirens. These include vehicles used for official purposes by the president. A police vehicle and those used by other recognized government security agencies. A motor vehicle used by the fire service. An ambulance used by a hospital or clinic. And a bullion vehicle registered by the Driver and Vehicle Licensing Authority, DVLA. Know that it is an offense to fit and use a siren on your vehicle if you are not licensed to do so. You will be fined if you break the law. Remember, only qualified vehicles should use the siren. Preventing crime is key. Here are some security tips that you'll find most helpful. If you are operating a business that involves handling cash, avoid routines such as banking, bulk cash deposits and withdrawals. You can contact the police for assistance. Mobile money vendors are advised to carefully choose their locations where they operate and consider security as a top priority. Never keep huge sums of money, jewelry, and other important documents at home. Send them to the bank for safekeeping. Children are one of our nation's most precious assets, and Ghana Police Service acknowledges this. In February 2018, a two-day child-friendly policing course was organized for police personnel across the country. The course, which is integrated as part of courses to be studied in police training school, is to equip personnel with the necessary skills in handling children who are in conflict with the law or children who break the law. And now, a story that will touch your heart. She was lost, but luckily she has been found. She cannot speak, so we don't know her name or her parents. If you recognize her or know her parents or relatives, please contact the police on emergency lines 191 and 18555. To you watching us out there, we thank you very much for staying tuned. Now you can go to our Facebook, our social media platforms and uh, give us information, give us feedback about what you think of the show. And the, as you heard the IGP also say, volunteer information. The police wants to work with you, the public. They want to transform the police service, make it more public friendly, but they would need you, your support, to make it happen. Mm -hmm.